Teoven Bachtele Rumalen. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to participate in this World Roma Congress and especially to deliver a speech on the Romani Resistance Day, which is a great honor for me. I will talk about the political significance of the World Roma Congresses. Uh, I think that the World Roma Congresses were actually a form of Roma resistance, Roma resistance, especially the First World Roma Congress. Um, this is a, a, a picture, a graphic, that shows the developments, the ups and downs of the Roma movement uh, since the Roma Holocaust till 2010. Um, but I will also uh, say a few words about the period after 2010. Um, because actually um, these stages of development are, they mark the successes and failures and successes of the International Roma Movement and the uh, Roma World Roma Congresses. Um, as the previous speaker, respected Vicente Rodriguez, mentioned in his presentation in front of you, um, the ideas of Roma nationhood, um, Roma national symbols, uh, um, flag and anthem, and also the idea of world Roma organization, the idea of world Roma unity, uh, these uh, ideas go back to the beginning of the 20th century and even uh, the end of 19th century. They are not new ideas, and these ideas um, were developed uh, in the beginning of 20th century, uh, first at local level, national level, in countries like uh, Bulgaria, Romania, um, um, Czechoslovakia, uh, Soviet Union, Tsarist Russia before this, but especially Soviet Union after the October Revolution. So they were, uh, they were developing, they were, uh, these ideas were evolving, and uh, the Congress, the first World Roma Congress in 1971 was the culmination, let's say, when finally um, uh, the delegates adopted uh, Roma, the symbols of Roma nation, of Roma nationality, the flag and the anthem, although they couldn't come to an agreement on the question whether this nation should claim a territory, should claim a state. So I will focus on uh, successes of the, uh, and failures of the uh, International Romani Movement, but I want to highlight that uh, actually if we carefully analyze what were the goals of the World Roma Congresses, we will see that the International Romani Movement actually achieved, it has achieved, it has accomplished most of its goals. And I will show you, I will uh, show you how. I will prove that it was, um, uh, that this happened. So, after the uh, Romani Holocaust, when, according to different estimations, between uh, 600,000 and 1 million and a half um, Roma uh, were killed uh, during the war, uh, the, international, the international Roma movement startly, uh, slowly, started uh, reviving because we have to say that international Roma, Romani movement actually existed even before the Second World War. It, was, it, was, it existed long before that. Uh, but the Holocaust uh, especially uh, became the unifying cause, the, the bad treatment of Roma the lack of recognition of the uh, victims of the Holocaust. This was, this was one of the main reasons why activists, intellectuals from different countries and also all over, all over the world came together, because this was a great injustice, and it should be clearly said that the victories, the countries who, uh, the, which um, won in the Second World War, the victors, committed a great injustice in, uh, towards Roma. Roma were not invited even at the Nuremberg's, uh, Nuremberg trials. 
as uh, witnesses. Roma were not recognized as victims of the Holocaust. Roma were not compensated. Nobody mentioned anything about Roma. The word Roma didn't exist. And one of the first great successes of the international Romani movement was the introduction and, uh, 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 of the word Roma in international political and legal um, uh, system, in the international documents. Because imagine that before 1971, this, this word didn't exist even. Nobody knew what, what is this Roma. People were talking only about gypsy Zigeuner and the other derived terms, you know, Tigani and, and so on. So the first success was the, uh, uh, it, it's, it, the first success is related to the creation of a unifying term, ethnonym, the confirmation, the establishment of the ethnonym Roma as a unifying term uh, uh, for, uh, for all Roma and Roma related communities in Europe. The second success, it came in 1982 uh, when Western German government finally recognized that Roma were persecuted during the uh, Holocaust, in the Holocaust, on a on racial uh, basis, as victims of racial uh, genocide. And this was the year uh, after 1982, uh, some of the surviving victims finally uh, got some recognition. Some of them received some kind of compensations, although it was not comparable to the compensations that uh, the, uh, the Jewish survivals from the Holocaust get, but it's a, another uh, issue. Um, so the third, the third big success of the International Roma Movement was the endorsement of 8th of April as the Day of Roma, International Day of Roma. This, this happened at the third, uh, the fourth World Roma Congress held in Poland. And that's why every year we uh, commemorate, we celebrate the International Day of Roma on 8th of April. So these were three very important things in the process of Roma nation building. Very, three very important achievements. The endorsement of the term Roma, ethnonym Roma, uh, the endorsement of the symbols of nationality, Roma nationality flank and, flank and the anthem, the recognition of Roma as, vic as, uh, um, as victims of the Holocaust, um, and of course, something also very important, the recognition of Roma as national or ethnic minorities in some of the European countries. This was also a goal of the International Romani Movement. And recognition of Romani language was also a goal of the International Romani Movement. Teaching in Romani language, introduction of the Romani language in the schools. So, and another great goal, very important goal of the International Romani Movement and the, of the World Congresses was the standardization of the Romani language because every nation deserves a standardized language. Uh, so at the Fourth World Romani Congress, 1990, uh, the late Professor Marcel Corteade proposed uh, a version of Romani alphabet, which today is still used in France, in Romania, in Kosovo, while in other countries, they adopted a dif uh, different approach and uh, regional variations, regional versions of Roma alphabet were, were developed. In Romania, it was Professor Gheorghe Sarao who developed such a standardization. Uh, in Bulgaria, uh, academic Christo Kuchukov, who is here uh, among us, um, uh, and uh, Milena, Professor, the late Milena Hupšmanova, uh, contributed a lot for the uh, development of uh, standardized uh, Romani alphabet uh, in Czech Republic and in the introduction of uh, Romistica in the um, University of Prague. So in different countries, there were people introducing, developing um, versions of standard, standardized Romani language according to the local regional dialects, regional 
specific, uh, the specific uh, conditions in the different countries. So this was also, also a, a great achievement of the international Romani movement. We cannot uh, uh, close our eyes. We have to be absolutely aware of this. Today in Vojvodina, I'm, uh, there are some representatives from Vojvodina, northern uh, Serbia here. Today in Vojvodina, Romani language is official language along with Serbian language and there are uh, even uh, TV broadcasts, programs, radio programs in Romani language. Um, also in Macedonia, Romani language is uh, uh, as recognized as second official language in the municipality of Shuturizari. And it's also uh, um, introduced in schools. Uh, so we cannot say that Roma movement totally failed and didn't achieve nothing. No, that's not true. Without this World Roma Congresses, we wouldn't have even what we have now. We wouldn't achieve even, we wouldn't arrive to this, wouldn't have arrived to this point where we are now. And that's why today, by the way, you have translation from Romani language during the conference because of the work of people who made it possible. And um, also I want to, to mention uh, uh, something very important. And there are, there are many successes, really, but there are also failures. And we have to mention some of them, or shortcomings, or misunderstandings. Um, and one of these misunderstandings, maybe, is the fact that Roma were declared as a non-territorial nation. So what is non-territorial nation? This happened, uh, actually, this is an old idea, but uh, officially this happened at the fifth Roma World Congress in Prague, Czech Republic. It was a declaration adopted after the Congress. In a declaration adopted, it was declared that Roma are a nation without territory. But now arises the following question. What does it mean? What does it mean, nation without territory? Could a nation exist without territory? Every nation arises at certain territory. It cannot be formed in the air or in the space. So from my point of view, as a lawyer and a person who um, studied law and politics, I think our respected, uh, the founding fathers and the, the previous generations of Roma activists made maybe a political mistake. Uh, uh, and this was declaring Roma non-territorial nation, simply because Roma are territorial nation. The very concept of Roma nation was developed and arised at certain territory. And the question is, where did this idea arise? Where did this idea come from? And that's why I think that Roma nation is a territorial nation. We exist in European Union, most of us, majority of us. Of course, there are uh, Roma in other continents. But the idea of Roma nation, Roma nationalism, Roma national symbols, these ideas belong to Europe, where the majority of Roma exist. And it was from Europe where most of Roma immigrated to other continents around the world. So uh, what is the danger? There is a danger. When we say Roma are non-territorial nation, we declare ourselves as some kind of flying creatures uh, like in this movie, the Tabor goes to the heaven. You know, there is a Russian movie, very, very famous, Tabor Atutiva Kamnebetu. Where we are, go where are we going? To the sky, to do non-existent, to extinction. No, we have to step down firmly on the ground with our two legs and say, we are here. We exist as a nation, as Grattan said, and I support this idea of Romani nation, and we are here. We are in Europe for many centuries. We are not, uh, uh, not non-territorial. We are territorial. We were living for more than six centuries on, in, on the European soil, among the European nations, intermixing with them, living together, uh, fighting together. We were together everywhere. So if the French, if the Italian, if the German consider Europe or part of Europe as his territory, then so the same right uh, have the Roma, to, also the Roma. 
How could we say they all were territorial nations and we were non-territorial? How is this possible? Where were the Roma at this time? During the, the First World War, Second World War, Balkan Wars, and all these events in the European history. Roma were participants in all these events. And also in the nation building, in the state building, in the creation of the, uh, all these Eastern European countries. Roma participated in the creation of Serbia, Bulgaria, Turkey, modern Greece, modern Romania. Roma were participants in this process. Participated in the economy, in the wars, in everything. And nobody has the right to, to deny the right of Roma or territoriality. Because it means tomorrow if the far right, if the neo-fascists come to power, th when they can say, we are non-territorial, you don't belong here, you don't belong to Europe, you don't have territory. Better you leave, you go somewhere else. So I think this concept of non-territorial nation is a little bit dangerous for us. Um, and I think this was one misunderstanding. I know what were the uh, motives, what, were the, what was the logic behind this idea. Some of the Roma activists was afraid, were afraid, actually, that maybe if they say we are a territorial nation, we, uh, this could be um, interpreted as some kind of uh, territorial claims, that Roma have ter claims to certain territories of some countries in Europe, and this dangerous, and so on. But we, we cannot give up from the most natural thing to be a nation with territory, because every nation exists on a certain territory. Uh, so after this uh, analysis of the World Roma Congress, a very brief analysis because we don't, I don't have much time, uh, the time is limited, uh, I, would, uh, uh, I, I would want to tell you that much of the failures of our Roma movement uh, are due to our own Romani idealism. Because Romani politics was very idealistic politics. It was ideal politic, ideal politic. For example, when um, Emil Schuka uh, went to, to meet, uh, when he went to New York to meet Kofi Annan, the General Secretary General of the United Nations, he asked Kofi Annan whether United Nations will recognize us as a, a, a nation without territory. But in, what does this mean in, ter, in international relations? Then when we were at the uh, World Conference Against Racism in Durban in 2001, uh, some of you were there. I think um, Academic Kirchukov, Aladar Horvat, and some other were, the, I think, uh, on the, in Durban, South Africa. We, we, we uh, advocated and we succeeded in, in uh, introducing uh, in the NGO Forum Declaration from the World Conference Against Racism, the idea that Roma are non-territorial nation. And Roma want a place in the United Nations together equally with the other nations. But how you want to be treated equally to other nations if, you are, if you don't have territory, you don't have army, you don't have state power, you don't have diplomacy, you don't have embassies, you don't have nothing. You have nothing. And you want to be treated equally to other nations. And this is, and they laugh, they are laughing at us. Because they say, these gypsies don't understand anything of politics and international relations. Of course, we were uh, absolutely uh, convinced that this was the right thing to do. And maybe at this time, at this period, this was the right thing to do for us. Because we are very idealistic, we were very idealistic. And some of us still are idealistic because we still dream of European solidarity and uh, some kind of romantic, I call it hippie image. We are some kind of hippie, happy hippie gypsies, you know? No, really. When I speak to some of our people, they, they imagine the things in very, you know, see the things through rose glasses, rose glasses, you know? But they don't see the coming war. They completely, our Roma leadership completely, uh, was completely unprepared and inadequate when the wars in Yugoslavia happened. And here in the room, there are some people who are uh, former refugees from, from Kosovo, maybe from Bosnia, from other countries. Our leadership was completely unprepared when the war in Ukraine happened. 
Our leadership was completely uh, undeclared uh, when Roma deportations from France started, although some people uh, worked hard, tried hard. And I want to mention here also the former member of the European Parliament, Victoria Mohachi. Her, her contribution when he went to Italy, when Berlusconi started fingerprinting Roma, there were people who were trying to do something, but in general, in general, we failed. We failed as Roma activists. We need to absolutely acknowledge this. Because, and the biggest, biggest uh, proof uh, for our failure is the fact that uh, Roma refugees from Ukraine are unwelcome, and even those with Hungarian passports were uh, expelled from Hungary. They are Hungarian citizens with Hungarian passports. They come to Hungary and they show them that they have to go back. So I'm finishing my speech. I want to tell you something. It's time for transition from Roma ideal politic towards Roma realpolitik. And realpolitik was a concept created here in Germany. Bismarck was the person who unified the Germans because he implemented realpolitik. And it's time for us to learn how to use realpolitik to be realist, to be pragmatic. Because neither Uni United Nations nor the uh, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, none of these international organizations helped, were able to help Roma in the greatest, greatest refugee crisis. In, in, in Yugoslavia, in Ukraine, uh, during the deportations of Roma from France. Actually, we are alone and we cannot rely on these international organizations because the whole, the entire international human protection, human rights protection system is falling apart. The whole political world order established after the end of the World War, Second World War, is falling apart in front of our eyes. We have a war in Europe. Something unthinkable in 10 years, 10 years ago. So we have war in Europe. Most of the Roma live in the neighboring countries around Ukraine. And we have to be seriously concerned what would happen if this war uh, involved other countries. And whether it will not cause an even greater refugee crisis. Mr. Tahir, we thank you very thank much you very for much. your presentation. Thank you very much.